hello everyone welcome to our today's class we're just going to begin maybe you can confirm whether you can see my screen from your end and whether i'm audible so that you can begin hello can you hear me someone can you confirm yes yes we can hear you okay okay thank you so um thank you for joining our today's lesson so we're going to begin as the rest join i have a couple of apologies from people who um made me know that they won't they won't manage to the class but for the rest maybe they're going to join as we progress so yesterday we covered the process of a data um, analysis and also a data entry and transformation what that means is so let me open starter data entry is where we generated a random variables yeah where we use the command set observation as a hundred yeah once that was done we generated using the generate command generate id which was equal to the number of rows generated so we just use underscore and n meaning that it will be equal to the number of observation generated we also generated um edge using generate edge yeah and in this case it was uh, our edge is a randomly generated variable and also a normally distributed data so it was r norm then another thing you should specify is the um mean the mean that you want to work with we worked with 50 of course you can have a different mean no fixed mean only that now your data distribution will accumulate or will revolve around the edge uh the mean of uh the value that you'll enter here then you have a standard division and that's all So basically, if we were to run more analysis on this data, one thing we could be sure is that the data is normally distributed because we randomly generated a normally distributed data, yeah, and you can work with. If I go to data editor using the edit, so this is the best thing about commands. Just the moment you learn how to work with commands, it's much easier than going through the steps whereby you go to uh, the menus. So I'll hit enter, and this is what we're having. We're having ID. And we are having edge. Sorry. Okay, wait. Yeah. So with those commands, you are able to generate your your data fast. Yeah. A through time and this is data entry alternatively we went we, earlier we saw how to copy data from let's say excel paste it here how to import data uh deba you took a screenshot of the error but you didn't share it you were supposed to send it to me so that i work with it okay 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 no problem so data import then from any time you are able to you you're with your data the next step is data cleaning whereby you clean the data through transforming it or by excuse me just a minute.
okay sorry for that so as i was saying as i was saying uh that's on data entry we also have a case whereby you transform the data maybe probably by a case whereby you're working with a categorical variable such as gender yesterday we worked with happiness yeah and anytime you're working with such data you have to uh, label the values you have to label the values and labeling the values requires you either to go uh, to run the commands because we have the commands or you go to the data editor sorry you go to the data editor data edit sorry i've opened to you go to the data edit so i'll go just click on the edit tab here under my command so that i rerun that and from that sorry from uh, that you can be able to uh, label your variables from this point yeah that's data transformation alternatively you can go ahead and uh, run the summary of the data so that you're able to see how the distribution is maybe running the minimum the maximum if there's a value that was not recorded as a numeric and you're working with numeric data set again it will give you the feedback you'll get with summary or described to give you the uh, uh, how your data is uh, generally uh, distributed all the values inclusive from there we did um, graphics yeah and we did a scatter of course you're going to see later on more graphs in the meantime maybe you can try to work with them yeah for example you have the bar chart here if you click on the bar chart it gives you or it pops up uh the um a window for generating the charts okay i'm not able to increase the size of this window i don't know why so i just hope it's visible yeah then um what we have first is what you want to generate we have the graph of summary statistics summary statistics we get the mean of course and the standard deviation if you want to work with we have uh the view one the vertical or horizontal how do you want the, the previously maybe let's talk about spss when you work with spss it was much easier because it's just selecting but now here apart from select you have to decide what you want to work with the statistics in your plot yeah so i'll choose the variable first we're having the variable to be displayed and we're having two id and age of course it won't be the best option to generate bar chart for id or age because these are uh, uh, the age specifically is a continuous variable so with continuous variable you can either work with a dot chart uh, a histogram a box plot and such yeah categorical variable is something like gender or happiness as we generated yesterday yeah and you can work with the same so in our today's lesson We are going to be looking more into analysis but in this case understand better on hypothesis as i've said we are going to be doing charts from time to time so one thing you should understand about chart is when a chart is needed the variable necessary for example we have said categorical variables or variable that has limited number of options such as gender where you can either be a male or female uh, we have a level of education we have happiness those are like scales all those are categorical variables when you're working with such type of data the best types of chart are the bus 
uh, or um, uh, the pie chart yeah for continuous variable we have the scatter the line chart we have um, the histogram the box plot all these are for continuous variable when you're able to plot that data okay uh, I'll begin to understanding hypothesis excuse me just a minute Okay, sorry for that. So, as I was saying, uh, we're going to be looking into hypothesis. Hypothesis, we previously said these are, are assumptions. Yeah. For example, you could be running an assumption about education. Yeah. Uh, your assumption, you'll be running it against a known, a known result. So you want to prove that what you're assuming is correct as you're going to be saying. So hypothesis is mostly used in whenever you're working with inferential statistics uh, or anytime you're running an analysis, definitely you have the objective. From the objective, you have the sub-objective. And from the sub-objective, you'll have the uh, objective questions that are guiding you on what to analyze. Yeah, and from these questions, that's why you decide now this is my assumption and this is what I'm running to prove that it's either correct, then you go forward with the analysis. We saw you have um, two types of hypothesis, the alternative and the null hypothesis. And we say null hypothesis is identified as H0, alternative hypothesis as uh, uh H1 or HA for alternative, it could be different. Sometimes, for example, in my case, you can see it's written as HA. Another case, you can find alternative hypothesis identified as H1. It's one and the same. So, null hypothesis is a default assumption often, of, of often representing a statement of no effects, no difference, or no relationship in a populations. Whenever we come to the alternative we use this, it's equal. There's no different. For example, when we say uh, age is equals to, uh, the, the null hypothesis is age is equals to 50. It means that there's no different. It is equal to that. The opposite or the alternative of that is what we're getting to, the alternative hypothesis. Yeah, and it represents specific effects the difference this relationship that exists so we uh, we uh, you'll find null hypothesis indicated that the case we are by uh, we say that the result is not equal to when you say null hypothesis equal is equal to alternative hypothesis result says it is not equal to so what is the objective of hypothesis or the aim or the purpose the goal of hypothesis its purpose is to, to determine or to provide when you do your analysis you'll be providing evidence yeah to support your hypothesis your hypothesis in this case would be alternative because if you're working towards the difference that means you're working with alternative if you're working with uh, equal to or that there is no effect no difference no relationship in most cases that exists in most cases you'll find that null hypothesis exists so you will always generate the alternative hypothesis and you'll be uh, analyzing data to prove your alternative hypothesis if it is proved right or if it is significant you'll go ahead and reject the null so that you go ahead with the analysis in any case as we said earlier that the null hypothesis is correct it means you can't go ahead with your analysis because you have no proof to give that or to tell that there's a difference between the null and the alternative hypothesis 
so I also added some reasons why it's important to have a uh, to test for a hypothesis we have some processes one you you formulate the hypothesis uh, I'm not currently in a position maybe to use a white board it would be much easier to uh, give the explanation on this but anytime you have your objective questions you'll always write down one alternative hypothesis and null hypothesis null hypothesis will always be what is known alternative hypothesis is what you are analyzing so that you can provide evidence that it is what you are assuming so the first thing in the process of hypothesis is formulate your hypothesis then you get data for your hypothesis yeah through different way then you go to analyze analyzing your data that's where you will uh, have the evidence whether your assumptions were correct or wrong if they were correct then you can go ahead with your research or with your analysis or what you intended to do if your assumptions are wrong it means the null hypothesis which is the known one is correct <coughs> sorry and you cannot go ahead with the analysis Uh, hypothesis testing is applied in medicine that's why you'll find most of the medical projects are done using statistical tools we have business education social sciences and such yeah so I also added some graphics to uh, just show you where you're going to have um the hypothesis used or rather the analysis if you have knowledge in sas if you have knowledge in stata if you have knowledge in um spss or you have knowledge in r for programming then you can be able to work with assumptions uh run or analyze your data and prove your assumption all your hypothesis yeah of course there are some more details on this i'm supposed to be sharing some data sets i don't know let me try to share it and i hope everybody is able to access data maybe through the whatsapp this link here i haven't shared this data so i'm supposed to give you this link it contains the data we're going to be using so let me try to copy it and share it with you So I'm just trying to share it. Okay, it's not sharing, so I don't know how I should share it. Of course, I can't read it out.
just a minute, let me see whether I'm able to share this link. Okay, yes I am now. I've shared the link. Maybe you can see how you can transfer it to your laptop if you don't have WhatsApp. I was supposed to share it through the email but I've just managed to share it through the WhatsApp. You can check it and download it. Just download it all. Just copy it. Copy paste it maybe through your email so that you'll be able to uh, access it through the stata this is a link to accessing a data set that we're going to be using so you just need to have the link then i'll show you how to run it for it to be active or possibly in use for to this lesson So I hope you have received it just in case you can let me know. The overview is blue in color, showing a statistical method and and and, uh, and, uh, and data analytics. The link I've shared, you, you're not supposed to open it, just copy it. It's a data set containing some sample data. You can just copy it from uh, WhatsApp. If you were not, if you're having WhatsApp in your laptop, then well and good. You'll access it from there because you'll just copy it. Copying is just selecting, then you're able to copy it if it's in your phone. You're not, you're not in a position to access the link into your laptop, you can share to yourself through the email whereby you'll be able to access it in your laptop. Okay, so I'll just copy it from my end and make sure maybe we should just a minute. I just remembered something I was supposed to show you yesterday. So let me confirm this. Is it So let me confirm something just a minute. Now I was just trying to see whether that command will navigate to our decimal places. Yeah, it did. Okay. Okay, okay. So I remember yesterday I promised to show you how to reduce the number of decimal places. I just uh, recalled the command itself. It's just as I've written it here yeah replace for example i'll begin by clearing so that we have the same sample data and then regenerate it so we have the set observation then we generate number of ids and then the age 
so when i run edit this is what i have id and then we have edge and if you can see the edge is having one two three four five decimal places so we're going to be using the replace command to reduce the number of decimal places so i've confirmed it so it's correct so we have replace and what you want to replace is the edge make sure you type it correctly to be equal to so we want to replace edge so that the results we are going to be having it will be edge but rounded off so we have round for rounding off then you open bracket then within the bracket you type the variable itself which is edge that you want to round off the number of decimal places and lastly you want it to be to how many decimal points if i type 0 0.1 that means I'll be, it will be rounded to one decimal places then you close so let me increase a little bit the size of my command area. I hope this is visible. This is the command I'm running. Replace edge to be equals to edge rounded off to 0 0.1 meaning to one decimal places. Then I run that. Yeah. If I run edit again you can see I'm no longer having five decimal places but I'm having one yeah So let's get into using the data I've just shared with you. So before you open the data or run the link, make sure you clean using clear command so that we clear our space. So we're going to be working so that we don't overwrap the current data with what we're going to be working with. That is most important that we noted that anytime you write or you add data when you haven't cleared your space, it will be added up. Yeah, and we don't want that. So I've cleared my space and if I run edit, I should be having an empty space so that I'm able to add the data set I've shared with you. So this is what I was saying. Copy the link I've shared with you. Just select it. Right click and copy. I'll be sharing the notes. Also, I'm supposed to. Sorry. So I've copied it. I'm supposed to share also the first part of it. So then I'll use the command before you paste your link. We're going to be using the command use. If you remember yesterday when we went to sample data, the example file and a file example data set then you select on the example you'll always have the use command for you to be able to use the da that data you'll have the use command use then the data so that's why also in this case we're going to be using the command use because the data set i've shared with you is a theta data set so use then you paste the link before you run it make sure you're connected to the internet Make sure you're connected to the internet before you run the link. If you're offline, you end up with an error. So, and again, if you run the link without the use command, you'll end up with an error because uh, Starter doesn't understand the link. It understand the command that runs the link. So they have to be uh, worked together with. Once that's done, just hit enter. And wait for the data set to load. Again, you can use the uh, 
file we were using yesterday here the new uh, do file editor you can use the new one or you can use the previous one yeah to so that you are able to save your commands so here we have the data set it's a high school and beyond type of data that's what we're going we're going to see what it, it's contained in a minute then it has 200 cases these are the observation we're having 200 observations 200 observations so so i prefer maybe we use the do file so that it's easy to work with so i'll click on do file i'll increase the size again so that it's visible to all of us I will not rerun the command, but I just copy it. Copy the link we have here. Just the use. If you add the other part of it, say the high school and beyond cases, you can put it with an asterisk as a comment. As a comment. Maybe I should add also a comment here. Sample data set. And this is the data set we are going to be using. So I don't have to run it because I've already run it. And we have seen this is what we have. So I run the edit or you can go to data, data editor, then the data edit mode so uh or the browse mode so remember we said we have two ways of opening the data editor we have data editor edit data editor browse and we said with edit you are able to work or um make changes to the data but with browse you are not able to do so and it's important if you're working with data set that you're not the one we probably generated and you don't need to work uh, out just on anything it's good you um, use the browse so that you don't interfere with your original data set. Yeah. You can either type browse here, just as we have been typing edit for data edit editor mode, uh, or browse for the browse mode. And then shortcut is brow br. So we have edit. And you have browse okay so let me run that and this is what we have the data set we loaded it contains uh, this variables ID we have gender we have gender this reading as female maybe we should adjust we have race we have um, SES Yeah. Uh we can talk you are about too, excuse you are too fast. <laughs> okay. Uh, Where are you? Unaenda haraka. Umetuacha kama tuko tuna copy hiyo nini? Hiyo link tunapeleka kwa do. After do. You don't do anything with this. You said that because I already you, you we can use we put a star uh, then that we copy that uh, we put a star then we copy that the all of that okay then under do file under do file editor window we said we write comments by using star we're not using the star yeah. anywhere anytime you're using a comment i just added a comment here you can either prop to use it or avoid it or you can type something else maybe you can add the um uh high school and beyond as your comment and then you copy the code use and then the link for accessing the data the reason i copied it is that anything else that follows it will be linked to the data that we're going to be using but don't run it if you already run it you had already because i previously ran it before i copied it okay so, how so can i move out from do yeah you can just minimize you can always minimize because we are going to be coming it to be coming back to the do file so you can minimize it so that any other thing you're going to run it's visible 
we said the reason we are using the do file it's because it's possible for us to save the commands alternatively any command we run under our home area on stata for example all these commands i've run here i can't save them i'll lose them so we're using do file so that we're in a position to save our commands yes and you can also rerun them later if you need that okay so i was viewing we were viewing the data in browse mode and i said you can either run the browse command or you can go to data data edit editor and then you click on data edit browse and you have said the browse mode is a case whereby you can't interfere with the data so you're going to be having it intact so here you have some cases so there is we have the program the school type your school type uh, let me try to figure out what this was yeah it's here the SAC is not written but you can see this is school type school of type we have a uh, type of program for the program we have read is for reading score we have write as a variable is for writing score then we have math score science score and we also have social studies score so this is how our data set looks like so those are the variables we're going to be using i'm just hoping we manage to copy the link just in case it's not running or you're getting an error you can let me know as well again i wanted to edit the column the column name for the gender so that it stop existing as female it should be either gender or sex so i've selected the column alternatively other variables you can select on the variable itself either way you should be able to change the name and remember we are under browse file that's why you can't manage to edit anything here other browse so if you want to edit the uh, the, the, the column name for gender I'll just close this, open it in edit mode so that I edit when I hit enter. I'll select on the variable female and then I'm, I can be able to edit the name here and I'll add it as gender. That's all. So you can see now it exists as gender and not as it previously existed. This is also reflected even if you open in uh, uh, browse mode you'll be able to see that gender was replaced you can as well see the command rename female to gender rename female gender this was the command that generated the column name from female to gender that's on renaming okay So I'm just hoping we're having the data. That's what I'm assuming. And I'll say just in case you're having an error, make sure you let me know. And I added that in any case you are having, um, you're not connected to the internet. Yes, Tiba. Mine is giving an error. Are you connected to the internet? Yes, it is giving the error that was when I was importing the data. Oh, let me see let me just again check on that you shared that too late so i can't be able to maybe check on that right now but maybe later i'll figure out what's the problem i don't know who else is getting the failure to dyma to dynamically load java routine library mine 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 is red uh what error uh was the was the command successful when you run it is it running yes uh, see i have that data so i wanted to to, to rena rename that gender from 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 female to gender okay you can use so the 
you can use rename female then gender like rename the female column then gender I put it under, under, under command I go to variable okay you can just you can uh, do it under command by using this command you, you can see on my screen alternatively you can go to the edit mode you can open the data in edit mode then you type it manually Uh, using that command, mine is bringing, mine is showing red, which means it's not successful. Uh, you're using this command, rename female. Rename female. Then gender, nothing else. Yes, nimeandika tu yote vilu meandika. Uh, female in lowercase. All are in lowercase. Uh, is it reading anything once you run it apart from it getting red is it reading any error down there uh, R, I'm seeing something in blue in color R bracket 111 after red okay okay can you open not found. Parable female not found. okay maybe you typed it wrongly Maybe you typed it wrongly. Can you go to edit mode? You can just type edit under the command. Just type edit and run. I clear first. No, no, no. Don't clear anything. Just type and edit, then, then you run it. No, that data is not there. I'm just seeing ID and age. Uh, did you run the command use and then the link did you once you added it i don't know whether when how you added it yeah, to the I, I saw those numbers you were projecting there to see things like those subject what what uh one thing if your column is reading id and age that means you didn't clear your uh space because i have that data here the one you are projecting i have it so the problem is, I want to change this female, this title of female equal gender, and that, it's not coming out. I'm asking. I don't know how you are seeing it. This is my question. Are you having? Are you currently under the view I am right now? Yes, I'm there. And you're heading here under gender is reading female. Yes, there it's reading female. Just yeah, select on that column. Then you go to the variable plop, uh, variable area, then you have the properties. Yes. Where it's having variable. name, then we have, name. then it's reading female, just double click so that you edit, you can change the name, you can just delete the female and type gender. Yes, I double click the female I'm name. The female. Okay, can you close it? Can you close your window? Okay, uh, have you closed it? Close what? The editor, the data editor window, the, the current screen. No, I'm still there. Close it. Completely close or I minimize? Close it completely. Then you type edit under the command here, type edit and run it. could be the issue if you opened the data set previously you would, okay clear you are just clear your space just run the clear command then you use you run use then the data set link
you type clear then you run that then you you run use then the link I don't know whether there is anybody having the same keys just in case you let me know so that I'm not working with one person have you ran the command is it successful okay Okay, you can run edit now. You let me know whether you have the data set or it's still empty. I go edit. Yeah. Now the contents are there. Yeah, you can try to edit the name. Just select on the name of the variable or the column. Then you can uh, try to edit the name and let me know whether it's adjustable now. Yes. Yes, it's now coming. Okay, okay. So, um, as I was saying, now that we have the data with us, the next thing you're going to be running is our tests for example we have worked with t tests so the view or the results i believe it will be much easier to work with uh, for us that's in case uh the result explanation is just similar to what we had previously in spc yeah you're going to be looking on the significance of the study one two and the explanation of the results you get for example the purpose of one sample t-test it will allows it will allow us to test whether the mean of the data we are using currently uh, the data at cd score it's the um high school and beyond data set we're using so when we get the mean when you run the mean the mean can be run using either summarize if you summarize you get the mean if you run uh summarize So just type summarize here or analysis again as a comment sorry so as a comment you must add the asterisk and then i'll just run summarize or sum yeah so once you type the command you select you select it and then you run Sorry. Then I'll go to our home, state a home file, and this is what we're having. The observations running from ID all the way to so social studies. I'm having the means, the standard deviation, and we have also um, our minimum and maximums. Yeah, that's in terms of the data distribution. So as you can see uh, in our variable, we're going to be using uh, to be comparing our average or the score, writing score in short, basically written as right as the variable. Yeah. So we're going to be testing whether our writing score or the mean for writing score for our data set is different from the known 
mean of writing score being 50 yeah so if you are to set for a hypothesis from what we are having or what the analysis we want to run we can see our null hypothesis is equals to writing score mean is 50 yeah writing score is 50 that will be a null hypothesis our alternative which is what we are running is writing score is different from 50 so we're going to be comparing our writing score for the data set we are using with 50 which is our known writing score test yeah so i'll go to stata maybe we can use the do file in this case so that we're able to save our codes and just that it, as it is it's a t test so t tests as a one word command t test and then we write the reason we're using write it's because we are running a t test for write so let me take you back to the data editor view we're having our variables as id gender race ses we have school type program reading score writing score mathematics score science score and social studies score and we are running our test for writing score that's why we have t test for write and we are assuming that it's equal to 50 so we're going to be comparing the mean for writing score in our case if i was to go back to home when we ran summarize writing score mean was 52 0.755 basically if we were to compare just manually with what we have we can say um our sample uh, writing score mean is different from the known mean which we are using as 50 yeah so let's see the results we get when we run our command this command will be successful if again if you learn you, you you run it under uh, the command under home tab still it will run and we're using do file to save our commands so i'll just execute you can see i've selected it because you previously so if you don't select the area you're running then it will run uh, it, it will run uh everything that you have and might end up with errors if maybe a command was successful previously so I've run that and you can see under our home area what we have here is the command this is the command we ran t tests for right and that it is equals to 50 and this is the result that we are getting we are having the variable is right the observations are 200 the mean is 52.775 so we are focusing on the mean yeah and the non mean is 50 so you can see h naught remember we have said h naught is uh the null hypothesis so h naught says that mean is equals to 50. so let's check on our alternatives uh if your alternative hypothesis says mean is less than 50 then your analysis won't be it won't be significant because you can see the p value is one point then the next the next ha for um alternative hypothesis says mean is not equal to 50. this is not equal to mean is not equal to 50. the t value indicates that the uh, uh the p value is 0, 0.00 remember when we were talking about the significant that wha that's what we are looking for here finally if your mean is greater than 50 our case our mean is 54 uh 52.775 so it's definitely greater so that we're going to be focusing on the alternative hypothesis mean being greater than 50 yeah because it's greater of course you can use not equal to 50 again it's one and the same only that now here we're having the p-value being 0 0.0001 and this being 0, 0.00 yeah so if you are to uh, conclude on what we are having we can say there is a mean difference between the known mean that's 50 
and our sample mean that's one when you come to the statistical or significant of the study we say the analysis is statistically significant yeah because you can see where our mean is either greater than uh, uh, 50 or not equal to 50 our p-values are less than 0 0.05 the reason I'm using uh, 0 0.05 that's our most commonly used confidence um, level and significant value I hope you remember how we came up with 0 0.05 how it's generated yeah so we can see our analysis is statistically significant so when i go now to the hypothesis now concluding on hypothesis we say we reject null hypothesis rejecting null hypothesis it means that uh, uh, the um, null hypothesis is not true so that means the alternative hypothesis is true so then you reject the null hypothesis i hope i answered the, uh, the three most used interpretations for results output okay just in case you have you'll be having a question you can let me know after one to one sample t test where you are comparing a test uh, your test results with a known variable we have the two independent sample t-test yeah you have the two independent uh, sample t-test an independent sample t-test is used when you want to compare the mean of a normally distributed interval dependent variable of two independent groups So um, the result, the procedure, it's similar to what we, or the rules is similar to what we had previously in the previous course. For example, in this case, our variable we are comparing, one must be a categorical variable. In our data set, let me check whether we have categorical variables here. Yeah. You can use the race, the gender, the, um, I guess this is the, level we're having the low the middle and high maybe i should confirm on this yeah the high school uh the school type sorry the program all these are categorical variables so you could be comparing um let's say uh the mean difference between uh in score for writing between either male and female you could be comparing the same writing score between the white the african-american the uh, his, 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 his panic and so on you can be comparing the writing score for low middle and high levels you can be comparing the writing score for public and private schools you could be comparing the writing skill for general vacation uh, and we also have academic programs yeah so those are categorical variables a music rating score because that's what we are focusing on of course you can use the reading skill the mathematics score the uh, um, science research studies but just make sure you are comparing your score mean with across a group yeah so I'll be using the again the do file editor so that we are able to save our command I uh, have added a comment here using the asterisk, maybe t tests, and we want to run let me add another one. Sorry, this is sample t test. Sample t test what we are running next is independent t-test
dependent sample t test dependent sample t test and we're going to be using the tests we're going to be using the t test and write again because it's a t test so t test and remember we said if you write the command in caps it no longer exists as a command so make sure you're using lower cases so t test for write for the writing score so we are writing uh we are, we are running a t test for writing score add a comma to add the second group is the grouping category by yeah you're going to see the difference by say the uh, writing score i'll use my grouping variable as school type so that you see how writing score is across different across public and private schools make sure you type school type as it is written is s c h t y p yeah okay uh this should be in brackets sorry this should be in brackets by that so i run that this by selecting and run if you have an error you always have a red writing sorry so it was successful and you can see it reads two sample t test with equal variances for the previous one it was just one sample t test so you're able to run and know what type of test you are running so this is two sample t test so in my comments under do file apart from independent sample t test i can add two into brackets two yeah so that you're able to slash two it's one and the same so this is the results So these are the results as you can see we have the groups group being groups as you can see other groups we have public and private we have the observations we had 168 uh, students who are from public that two from private this is the mean for writing score for people uh, for students from public and this is the writing score for people from private school and you can see it's high for private as compared to those who are in public we also have the standard deviation and standard errors down here we have the difference the difference is equals to mean in public minus mean in private this is where this difference we are calculating will help us it will help us in the in the uh, uh what do you call it the assumption the hypothesis part if you check down here we have null hypothesis difference is equals to zero so you, you have to understand what where this difference is from for example if you can see the mean of private is 55 the mean of public is 52 of course there's a difference so it's not equal to zero so definitely we reject the null hypothesis yeah and the mean difference when you subtract is what we have at the far end yeah 
what you have here at the far end the difference between public mean in public and mean for private in writing score is negative 1.8049 so we can see there is a difference so let's check on the p-value so that we analyze about the significance of the study of course one we have said the uh, is a difference and when you talk about the null hypothesis that says it's equals to zero meaning there's no difference we reject it in terms of the significance of the study if the difference is less than zero that means that the, the p-value will be 0 0.03 so this is where we are because our t or the difference is negative 1.8049 meaning that our t or our difference is less than zero so 0 0.03 0 0.0363 it's definitely um less than 0 0.05 so again our analysis is significant the reason we stopped at difference being less than zero i've said it's because our t is negative 1.8049 you can see if the difference is not equal to zero the difference uh, the value is 0 0.0726 then lastly we have the difference being greater than zero the, the p-value is 0 0.9 is significant in that case so our difference is negative one which is less than zero so we can see our analysis is significant are we having any question okay so next on still on a question yes yes i got a question yes ask Mm -hmm. We command it T test right then if you review. This is the easiest way if you may ask because you already know the command. But of course, remember we talked about the statistics part and the graph. It's yeah. the same way you write commands for graphic, the same way you have commands for statistics. So you can see we have summaries, linear models. Yeah. We also have alternative for commands under this point under statistics running from summaries we have been running the tabulations the t-test the regression all of them are here sometimes the method under this case it's somehow complicating so it's wise to make sure you use them in the best way possible yeah but definitely if you are to the, the command it's simple not complicated in any way okay so back to the uh do file and the next test we are running is the t test as well we're going to be running a t test we have three types of t tests and this is the paired t test paired t test we said um sample t test is testing for the mean difference between your sample mean and non mean it depends on two paired t test we are testing mean across groups it could be two groups three groups and so on and in our next we are having our paired t-test it's used when you have two related observations two related observation for example in our case we have the score for reading and the score for writing those are closely related reading and writing of course they have some differences not everybody who knows how to read will be able to write and not everybody who will be able to write will be able to read so but the the results are in a way related that's why we say it's used to when you have two related observations 
okay i run a test on this again we're going to be using t test but in this case we are comparing two variables reading being equal to writing make sure you write read is equal to write sorry for this we are comparing two related variables reading and writing and we are comparing their means of course the mean of reading and the mean of writing in our null hypothesis of course will be equals it will read that the read is equal to writing the mean for reading is equal to the mean of writing and we want to prove that that's wrong that's why we are running our test so i select my part and run it so let's see whether it was successful sorry yeah it was and just before the table you'll always see this reads paired t-test and that's exactly what we are running paired t-test we're having our observations our variables is reading and writing observations here when you come to the mean the mean of reading is 52.23 uh, the mean of writing is 52.775 so there's a slight difference not that much but slight difference between our variables so the main difference here the mean difference reads that mean for reading minus mean for writing is equals to negative 0 0.8673 very small the difference is slightly very small and the all the null hypothesis is saying the mean difference is equals to zero closely to zero definitely not equal to zero but if we were to talk about the null hypothesis we can say we don't have much evidence because you can see the difference is very small down here under the null, the alternative hypothesis we have the mean difference if the mean difference is less than zero yes ours is less than zero because it's negative 0 0.867 it says the p the p value is 0 0.1934 it's always good you get up you have all in time i read a p value you can maybe try to guess on your own understanding what that means so what we have here 0 0.1934 it's greater than 0 0.05 yeah so we can see our analysis is not statistically significant and anytime we say our analysis is not statistically significant back to the null hypothesis so we say we fail to reject null hypothesis we don't have uh, enough evidence to say that the mean for reading is different from the mean for writing so we we're going to fail to reject null hypothesis and again our analysis is not statistically significant okay so next we're going to work on the ANOVA so we take I, I just realized I didn't uh, 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 arrange the sample as well I'll do that before I share so we have one way ANOVA here and basically ANOVA is used when you have a categorical independent variable with two or more categorical variables and are normally distributed and are normally distributed so what we're going to be doing we're going to be um, using categorical variables just to give an example in our case here back to our data set for you to run an ANOVA you can either use gender race uh, the um, level then you have um, 
the school type and the program only those like you can't use the continuous variable to run for the difference in this case to run for the ANOVA so let's get more details again on the same so we have said it's used when you have categorical variable dependent categorical variables and the data set is normally distributed the interval dependent variable and you want to test the differences in their means so we are testing the means but in this case with categorical variables remember we have been using right that's a continuous variable we have also used the gender which is um uh, uh categorical variable a combination of both we have reading and writing both are continuous variable but a case when you want to compare the mean for categorical variables purely categorical variables then you're going to be using ANOVA so I'll go back to the do file add a comment here one way ANOVA ANOVA starts for analysis of variance and this is the command ANOVA of course in lowercase ANOVA to run an analysis then um, because it's a one-way ANOVA so we're using the command ANOVA then we have our programs so let me see program it's PRG it's reading as a command I'm not sure why Let me check. We have um it's used when you have categorical independent variable with two or more categories and a normally distributed interval dependent variable and you wish to test for differences within the mean of the dependent variables. How I'm trying to understand it is kinda the opposite of the PRT test yeah we were checking for um, T test analysis the means by categorical variable yeah but in our case here we are using uh, categorical variable so just let's see the results I didn't see whether a dependent variable is indicated it should be categorical so I don't know whether you should use a continuous variable so how do you identify maybe you should explain something the position of an independent variable and dependent variable We say dependent variable uh, variable that um, depend on others for existence, and then we have a dependent variable do not depend on others for existence. If we have two variables here, we're supposed to be having dependent variable first, and then independent variable follows. Of course, we need two variables here. Okay, just a minute. Let's see what happens with just the program okay I'm getting the results for ANOVA for one variable in this case then we are having the number of observations 200 uh, this will remind you of where we were having um, the regression analysis where we are having the R squared
squared the adjusted R and we print that the interpretation is one and similar but you can see here we use just one variable so and the R and adjusted R talks about the accountability of a variable in predicting another so it's zero in fact most of the model is empty so we need another variable the residuals and then the total so let me go back to the do file we need to edit this command and i've said after the ANOVA the first variable for example if we were to add another variable this will be the dependent variable so i'll just confirm uh the independent variable is the one that should be categorical so if I, wa I want to add another variable here maybe which is not categorical or categorical it should be here so that the program which we are focusing on it will be um an independent variable for example if i have a vari our variable as read here is I have our variable as read here this will be the dependent variable like reading depends on the program maybe to the data what we have under program is general vacation uh, vacational uh, then we have academic and so on we can the school type also could be another category of variable you're going to use whereby you compare maybe the reading skills uh, depends on the public or private school yeah so this is the dependent variable the reading or any variable if you add writing here it will be the dependent variable but whatever follows is the independent variable and according to ANOVA independent variable should be categorical note that the independent variable should be categorical you can use if the program is categorical we also have the race the gender but the most reading skill or writing skills should either depend on the program or the school type or maybe the level as well so i'll execute it now so that we can see whether we have um uh, a reading skill depending on the program so i'll execute that yes now this is better if you check on the r squared it's not zero anymore we are having some variable for example we can see this is 0 0.077 remember r squared we don't have r r squared and adjusted r in most cases work they were close the variable were close to, to, to each other and the main purpose of it was to explain the accountability of the independent variable in predicting the dependent variable in our case you can say this is around 17 17 percent 17 percent of um the program was accounted for in predicting the reading score of a student that's how i would explain the results we have here yeah You can as well check on we have the root standard error not that we have the significant the um p values the p values at the end yeah 0 0.00 they're also very small so the if you talk about the statistical the statistics uh, the statistical significance of this analysis you can see it is statistically significant so i guess those are the most important area we're going to be focusing on yeah So if you have a question you can let me know before we go to our final part which is the simple or rather regression analysis
maybe here I can just show you how our duvet looks like yes Frederick hello yes uh, I was just asking huh? mm -hmm. what's the the what's our hypothesis for this test the ANOVA the ANOVA yeah, okay, uh, okay, uh, according to the program, according to the variable we are using, that's the fact that we are comparing uh, reading skill and the program, we can say the null hypothesis, remember you said that in most cases you find that the, uh, the um, null hypothesis, or we're talking about the equal value, so we can say the reading skill this is the null hypothesis the reading skill or the reading the reading score is equal across the groups say for um, vocational let me see the programs the programs we have general like the reading score is the same for general uh, vocational and academic According to the mean difference, of course, we were, we were supposed to mention about the mean difference. Because the purpose, again, when you come to ANOVA, you are testing for the difference in means of the dependent variable broken down by the levels. That's another purpose of the ANOVA. From the model and the program, because of the model and the program we're using, the partial uh, variable, the degree of freedom, sorry, the um, mean, the F statistics, the F value for the P value, if you check across both of them they are all equal yeah so you can't be able to distinguish maybe between how is the difference between the mean for reading in vocational you can just give in specific vocational education uh vocational um program we have education uh, academic and um, general so you will just give a general answer because you will never you will not be having a case whereby you have specific for each to know how difference is the difference mean for reading in academic in general and such so you will focus on the p-value and the accountability yes so the next thing we're going to be looking for is the linear let me check that now what's next here yeah simple linear and multiple regression and of course we use regression to uh, test for association between variables and one of the assumption is normally distribution distribution of the data we also had some other assumption but basically what we're going to be focusing here is the results of course the distribution or uh, maybe the normal distribution we can test on the same remember the same way we test for um distribution of the data for example using a histogram yeah or using a box plot those are some of the graphics used you can use the same here to confirm whether the data is normally distributed or not so yeah the command for regression is regress so 
so I'll just have a comment here a regression analysis and what we're going to be having here one is the uh, command regress and just as we indicated uh, from the ANOVA, you begin with your dependent variable, then what follows is the independent variable. So let's see what will be our results. So probably we can have an assumption Okay, the, the most in most cases, the only category of variable we can use to compare reading skills, meaningful results, reading skill, writing skill, uh, we have math score, science score, and study score, would be if we are comparing the results here with program, school type, and this SE level, haven't gotten the name yet. i let you know. Or maybe if we open the data, that should be another option of getting the results. But I was assuming it's the levels because we have been low, middle, and high. Yeah, I was assuming it's the school levels. So, um, for example, you you can um, have an assumption that. The maths score depends on the program. The maths the maths score depends on school type. When I say it depends on it means that's the dependent variable. Yeah. The math score depends on the the school level. Yeah. Of course it's hard to uh you can it could be insignificant to compare the math score with the race and probably maybe gender yeah like saying that math score depends on gender or math skill depends on uh race but of course it doesn't mean you can't run such analysis in our case we can use um the program that math score depend on uh program meaning that math score will or math will be our dependent variable and then program will be our independent variable so if you are to list in our area here you have to start with math because it is the dependent variable followed by the independent variable program i hope you're getting what um, we're going to be generating So let's run this and see the results. So I select and run. So this is a result you are getting regression for maths depending on the program. We have the source where we have been the model and the residuals. 
here we have the maths coefficients we have the program and constant I don't know whether you remember how we generated the model then we have the number of observations the air statistics that generated our results the R squared and adjusted R and you can see our adjusted R in um, R squared if you were to put it into percentage it would be around 2% so just 2% of the program that is used in predicting the math score so that means the program is not much of a predictor of the math score under the model where we are having the coefficients here the coefficients we have the program being negative the program being negative maybe we should know the alignment of our variable um, you can open the editor the editor window of our data then i want us to see how the program was labeled you can go to the label just select on the program select on program make sure its program is selected then we have the value label se this the value label for program is sel i'm hoping so because that's the one currently selected haven't changed anything so make sure you don't interfere with that click on the three dots click on the three dots at the end and you want to see what is contained in sel and this is how it looks like one is for general two is for academic and three is for vocational when we say that the program is negatively affecting the performance of maths remember how we talked about a unit increase maybe i should explain with that we can say a unit increase in program leads to negative two or it leads to 2.03 decrease in maths score i hope you can see my screen clearly we are having the program coefficients being negative two and this is where of course we're going to be generating the model and i'm saying an increase in program and that's why i opened the level here when you talk about an increase in program meaning when we come from general to academic to vocational when we move from general to vocational according to the results it's telling us that it's leading to a decrease in math score okay so if we were to generate a model we would say y y being math score is equals to 56 which is our constant 56.77 or you can write in full 56.76917 minus 2.03 6627x that would be our model okay let's see what if we add a third variable a third variable so i'll go again to the do file sorry and okay i need to close this yeah you need to close that make sure you don't interfere with anything so then we'll go to the do file i want to add a, a third variable regress 
math using program sorry it's here not the whole name i don't know whether if we add without any other detail we add our level of education i'll use the ses i'm assuming is the level uh, which level a person is in school ses i'll use it as another variable um maybe we should specify at this point okay let's see the results of course each of our variable should be giving us different results because a variable it's by itself describing or representing the outcome so again if you check on the r squared is still too small but it has increased from two percent to nine to nine percent here the math score the program is still negatively affecting the math score but the ses it says a uh, unit increase in uh, uh, school level it leads to three point increase in maths score it's positive so it's reached to increase i don't know whether we're having any question in concerning um the regression result outputs just in case it's not clear you can let me you can use more variables you'll just uh if you check on the what we have the result we're having the first variable where we just used one dependent variable and one independent variable yeah the prediction results yeah one the accountability is small the accountability is very small and uh, as compared to the accountability when you're having three variables that meaning two predictors and one dependent variable okay not that the moment you're able to explain the results doesn't matter whether it's the result you're getting using starter or spss you're good to go in interpreting a result running the analysis is another thing uh, because before you interpret the results you have to know how to analyze or to run your analysis so you have to check on that as well just in case you'll be having a question you can let me know i don't know whether you are available we can have a session tomorrow just in case i uh, let me know maybe i can create a voting uh option in the group i hope i'll not forget i don't know who is available maybe if you can hear me you can confirm your availability before i put on that because of someone who is not in class today who will be available tomorrow remember we didn't have a class on monday and last week we didn't have one class so if possibly you'll be available we can cover on those two yes caroline okay uh, what about the rest maybe you can unmute yes yes judge uh, uh for me i will not be available okay i've been having problems following my lessons you can for that uh, by the way how was the screen on your side on today's class How was the screen pre presentation on your end today? How was it going? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so you know, I'm just following up. That's why I'm you, I'm yeah, saying you know you uh, had issues yesterday that you couldn't. The, 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 the screen is clear. Okay, okay. Even on my phone. Okay, it's good because uh, I advised previously. Uh, it's okay. You join 
uh, the class using your phone so that it will be possible whenever you are near your laptop it's much easier to now type or do whatever we are doing if you're joining with your phone but if it's all it was clear then uh, you can maybe work on what we have covered yesterday you already gave me a message earlier on so uh, I will also request that you 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 send uh, for us the recorded uh, version. Okay, okay. Uh, anybody else? Uh, Helen, you can confirm your availability as well as Diba, Frederick. Uh, for me, Fridays are tricky. I'm on call on Friday, so. Okay, okay. I won't be available. Okay, okay. Deeper. Deeper, can you hear me? Okay, what about Frederick? Can you hear me? Okay, uh, I'll just uh, place a uh, button on the same in the group. And then from there, I'll confirm whether we'll be having a session or not tomorrow. According to how people with how available will the rest be. Otherwise, that's all for today. Have a nice evening. No, excuse me, Yes. Uh, is there any way we can save this uh, output? The output itself. Yeah. Copying. You can copy it. Maybe later I'll show you uh, the way we are opening the do file. The same way we are opening the do file, we have an option whereby you can open and save the output. But now a different window from what you're having. In the meantime, uh, maybe copying it, copy table, would be the best option for now. Yeah. Okay. Have a nice evening.